Pierce County wants to try what King County did in dealing with the homeless crisis. If that sounds like a bad idea to you, it sounds like a bad idea to me too, but let's give them an opportunity to show that they can do it better. This segment is brought to you in partnership with our friends over at Future 42. Turn your frustration into action at future42.org. All right, this article came out in the Tacoma News Tribune and I'd heard some whispers of this. We know that when King County moved to a regional homelessness approach that was sort of pushed on us for a long time, this is the solution, this is the end all be all. They started the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. It hasn't made a bit of difference. The only difference is made is in spending way more money than we were previously spending. And now King County has seen a 23% increase in homelessness from 2022. Spending more money, regional homelessness approach. All it was is it created more government bureaucracy and red tape, more six figure salaries, and hasn't done anything to actually get people off the streets. And it's been a complete boondoggle. So then we go down to Pierce County. This is the article from the Tacoma News Tribune reality check. Why will it take two more years and a million dollars to create a regional group to address homelessness? Well, that is a good question indeed. So Pierce County is considering also regionalizing its homelessness approach. But as expected, bureaucracy has gotten in the way. There's been delays. It's costing a ton of money. So here's a little bit from the News Tribune. Pierce County is offering a million dollars for consulting services to design and plan implementation for a regional coalition that has been in the works since 2022. As part of its comprehensive plan to end homelessness, which was established in March 2022, Pierce County is bringing local leaders and stakeholders to the table as a way to coordinate efforts to reduce homelessness across jurisdictions. The latest coalition is being called the Uni Unified Regional Approach. The URA held its inaugural meeting April 12th, hosting representatives from more than a dozen cities across the country. Is this starting to sound familiar to you? It's starting to sound familiar to me. Representatives from Pierce County Council also intended, including council members Ryan Mello and Janny Hitchin, who convened the meeting. In an interview with the News Tribune, Hitchin said the URA is being established because of the county's current response to homelessness being a patchwork of community organizations, agencies, and jurisdictions working without coordination. She said the approach will allow people to, has allowed people to slip through the cracks of the region's social safety net. So let me get this straight. Um, you're not happy with the homelessness response right now. And so instead, you want to mirror King County's homelessness response, which has inarguably been a much bigger disaster and has not succeeded in helping people out of the throes of addiction and mental health and squalor. That's interesting. There's a lot of words in there that sound very familiar if I recall to when the King County Regional Homelessness Authority was being convened. That word, we're convening stakeholders because people are slipping through the cracks. Like, this is the same stuff. Uh, let's see. The Tacoma News Tribune goes on to say, Hitchin said the consultation process could take up to two years after a third-party consultant is chosen at what is estimated to be the beginning of July. So they've got a study to do studies, to do consultants, to do studies, to help people who are living on the streets. Got it. According to the post and application, the consulting firm chosen will be tasked to design the scope of work and organizational structure for the URA and implement the preferred design of the URA. All this to help people living on the streets. When we just played a video on the show yesterday of Andrea Suarez just walking up to a lady, shaking her and saying, I'm taking you to detox. And she did that f with no taxpayer money. They go on, Hitchin said she believes the consultation process, while potentially lengthy, would be necessary to build trust among the many government, non-government organizations and tribes that would be part of the URA. She described the county's role as a participant instead of the driver. Instead of using previous models to dictate the structure of the URA, Hitchin said the county hopes to build a unique congregation built on trust and relationships she said doing so might require moving at, quote, government speed. Well, that's that's a terrifying prospect. Now, there is some people who aren't buying into this whole thing. Puyallup City Council member Ned Whitting is one of them. He spoke to the News Tribune. He said that their comprehensive plan to end homelessness implementation advisory board and the plan's steering committee, he's part of that. He said after the inaugural URA meeting, he was skeptical it would be effective in getting unhoused people off the streets. He was critical of the $1 million that the county wanted to pay a consultant. He questioned whether that was a good use of regional resources. He he pointed out that the first goal named in the plan announced in 2022 was to create a unified homelessness system, but it has been two years since the county made steps to achieve that goal. He said, we plan, 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 but we don't act, act, act. 
Puyallup City Council member Ned Whitting is apparently the only one with a little bit of common sense. Now, look, on the homelessness crisis, obviously we can't do anything. We've got ourselves into quite the pickle and people are dying and suffering on our streets every single day at higher rates. But when you look at what King County has done, and the regional homelessness authority where the first CEO just resigned, you know, they weren't even paying their contractors on time. It was really just a way to be able to funnel money to entities and organizations that Democrats in control in King County wanted to funnel them to. And it hasn't solved the underlying issue. We've talked about this. Why would you solve a problem if it meant all your salaries would go away? So they have no incentive to solve the problem. So now Pierce County, which I would say is more of a common sense place, certainly, is looking at doing the exact same thing. Well, why would it be any different? Now, certainly, if you had a leader in Pierce County at the helm of it, who understood the problems in King County and were willing to hold people accountable, were willing to audit resources and outcomes, that would be better. But keep in mind, Pierce County is electing a new Pierce County executive. Now, if it were Bruce Dammeyer who was going to lead this thing when it finally got off the ground, I might have some semblance of hope that it would be done in a way that was fiscally responsible. But one of the people convening this is Ryan Mello, who's as progressive as it gets, I don't think has shown any willingness to be fiscally responsible. And he's running for Pierce County county executive. So that does not give me a lot of hope to have a progressive person, if he's elected Pierce County executive, run what will become a boondoggle of government waste and misfunction. Uh, I think Kelly Chambers, yeah, Kelly Chambers, I don't know if she's the only other person in the race, but Kelly Chambers is running as a Republican. Uh, I would have a little more faith in her ability to be fiscally responsible, because that's the big thing for me, is that if people are giving you millions of dollars of their hard-earned money, right, they expect outcomes. They're giving it to you. They're agreeing to taxes because they want to help people. They have empathy for people who are living on the streets. They also realize the societal issues that come along with that and crime and all these things. So if you're not willing to make sure every single dollar that's going into that program is helping people in need, then you're just failing. So I think that's my big fear is you're going to do this if voters elect someone like Ryan Mello, who doesn't have a track record of fiscal responsibility. Pierce County is going to end up with the exact same situation that King County has found itself in. All right, that segment was brought to you in partnership with our friends over at Future 42. Turn your frustration into action at future42.org.